Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Life Changers Church. I'm Grace Dickow, and I'm so happy that we are having this time together. This is going to be a great morning. This is going to be your time, so I want you to lean in wherever you are. I want you to get your cup of coffee. Maybe you're already settled and situated. Livia did such a great job announcing um, her dad's book that's coming out now, and you, you definitely want to get that. Um, really, we've been talking so much. Uh, at Life Changers, we really, really, in Chicago, that's where we're located, by the way, um, but we are reaching out to all of you around the world, and wherever you're watching from, we are so delighted to be with you. We are all in God's presence together. Something good is going to happen to you today, so I want you to get situated. And kids, if you're there watching with your parents, God bless you. If you're watching from different countries, different cities, I mean, just let us know where you are in the chat. Um, feel free to comment in the chat. Feel free to, you know, add anything, say an amen, whatever, because you know what, we're, I know there's distance right now, in, but not in the spirit. We're here together, and God is going to do something great. So, Father, I just thank you right now for the people watching, for, for that you just use me to encourage them, to serve them, to bring to them the food, the bread of life, the living water that you are to our lives, and in Jesus' name, Amen. Today, I want to talk to you about leaning into God's love. And we've been talking a lot about leaning into God's love and intimate relationship with him. And I think during COVID, one of the things that uh, Greg talked about was leaning into that voice and embracing the fact that God thinks about you, that he loves you. In fact, any time that you're willing to think about him, his automatic disposition is to love you. That's a quote from Gregory Dickow, by the way. <laughs> so um, it's like this, this is what we believe at Life Changers Church, that God is in love with us. He's not mad at us. He's mad about us. And I don't know about you, but I need to hear that every day. I can't live without God's love. I'm addicted to it. But there's something that tries to stop that love, and it's fear. We know that, you know, fear, perfect love casts out fear, but and we all know that as Christians, that God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. Maybe you're just watching and you're not a Christian, whatever. It doesn't matter what your background is. Um, most of us know fear is not a good thing. We try to overcome fear in our lives. And from the word of God, we know God hasn't given us fear. But we spend a lot of time worrying. We spend a lot of time with anxiety. We spend a lot of time in depression. And that's one of the reasons why uh, Greg wrote that book. Because when your heart is broken, when your heart is filled with fear, Broken dreams, disappointments, you know, the Bible says um, that scripture, like, like uh, when you're disappointed over and over, it's like the heart breaks. And when your heart's broken, it like leaks out. And so you can hold on to a, you'll have a dream or something, an idea, an imagination, a, you know, a good hope. But then it leaks out through those broken cracks in your heart. And so God wants to make us whole. He wants to cure our soul. He, he cares for our soul. Your soul is valuable. You know, it, it's in you. It's you. And what I want to encourage you today with, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to talk to you about five times that Jesus said, fear not. Because I believe fear is the, I believe fear is the opposite of love. People say fear is the opposite of faith, whatever. I, I believe fear is the opposite of love. So, we have to deal with that fear in our lives. And I will tell you right now, I'm not here to say, I've conquered fear, and so just listen to me. No, I'm going to share with you five times Jesus said, fear not, because I'm here with you. Like, God, help me. I don't want to be afraid in my life. I want to live a life that's leaning in and walking in intimacy. And I've experienced, I've experienced that for sure. And I'm learning to live. And really what it is is we're living from the inside out. Because in life, and kids know this, teenagers know this, adults on social media, like everyone is comparing themselves. It's so easy now because there's pictures, pictures, pictures of everybody's life and their cat and their dog and their child and their car and their life and their outfit and their hair and blah, blah, blah. I'm not on social media a lot because I just, I don't have time. I don't know how people have time. I can't, I'm slow at getting things done. So like, I just don't have time to go through all that. But I celebrate people, I celebrate the wins in people's lives, I'm excited for them, but life is not really about what you can gather to yourself, it's, it's, a, it's really from what's inside of you. So Jesus knows that, that intimacy, 
That is what he came for. He came. He removed the separation. You know, fear is really the, a sense of separation from God. Fear is like the absence of God's presence. And so Jesus took care of that. He took care of that separation, right? We know that Hebrews 10, 19 says that he, through the blood of Jesus, we have full freedom and confidence to enter into the Holy of Holies by the power of the blood of Jesus, right? We have this access through, but it says in Romans 8, 39, that nothing will separate us from the love of God. We've been hearing a lot about that. But there's a verse in Ephesians that I want you to hear also that I think is just, as, just to kind of set the tone. Um, it's in, uh, where are we? It's Ephesians. I, I guess I didn't write it down on my other notes. But Ephesians 3.12, yeah, that's right. In whom, because of our faith in him, my team is so awesome, they're already prepared. We dare to have boldness, a free access, an unreserved approach to God with freedom and without fear. So the title of this message is Freedom from Fear Forever. This is why Jesus came. This is why he died on the cross, so that there would be no separation, no feeling of fear. I mean, when Adam was separated from God, immediately he felt afraid. So now Jesus brought us back. Jesus has brought that, he's removed that separation. So now we can talk to the Father face to face. We can commune with our Heavenly Father. And oh my gosh, you will just go to another level when, when you allow this love to come in you. So what do we have to do? We gotta get rid of the fear because fear will try to stop that. God just wants you to trust him. And fear robs us of that trust. It gets in the way of that. And all relationships are built on trust. So we need to be able to trust God. And sometimes we're scared, you know, we're afraid of God's not going to hear our prayer. We're afraid God's not going to, um, he's going to bless somebody else and not us. He's going to, uh, maybe we're afraid of what life could do to us. We're afraid of sickness. We're afraid of dying young or getting in an accident or afraid of missing our place or not getting the opportunities or not taking the opportunities or not knowing what to say or um, just fear of, you know, failing. Just fear of being wrong, fear of failing. And you know, failure, I wanna say this too, failure is not the opposite of success. Failure is actually part of the journey. So if you failed, you need to just recognize, hey, you're on the right track. You're moving towards your success because you cannot succeed without having some failure. It's just part of, it's like a child learning to walk. They're gonna fall, but they have to get up and get up and get up and then they'll get walking. But no baby starts walking without ever falling. So we put so much pressure on ourselves as Christians. And I just feel right now, I'm feeling from those of you watching right now, I'm feeling your heart and I'm feeling like just God's heart for you is to put boldness in you confidence in you, a freedom to live your life freely and not bound up and worried. Am I doing this right? Is this the right way? Oh God, I can't hear you. I don't know what to do. No, no, no. To have this like inner, Jesus said that when you drink of the water I give you, it's like rivers of living water that will flow, that will come from inside you. That is your greatest power. What's in you, not what everyone sees out here. It's what's in you that is going to, the force that's going to be your life in this world. So, you ready? All right, let's talk about five times. I'm just going to put this out there, and then you figure out what, how God's going to, he's going to speak to you right now about what you're dealing with and what you're afraid of, what fear's trying to attack you. I know you're not afraid, but, or maybe you are, but I know that fear tries to stop all of us. So, we have to be ready. So, number one, um, the first the first place that I want to take you to is, it says in John 16, 27. Let's look at that verse right now. John 16, 27. The Father himself tenderly loves you because you have loved me. Actually, can you go to verse 26? I guess it's right before that. I thought it said fear not. He says, um, pray in my name. I'm not saying that. I'll ask the Father on your behalf. But the Father himself, okay, well, we know that perfect love casts out fear. And this is one verse that gives us confidence right here, that the Father himself tenderly loves you. So that's one reason not to fear. 
because I thought it was a time where Jesus said, but he was saying, the Father tenderly loves you. Okay, so that's all right. Let's go to number two. Number two, the second thing that Jesus said, the second time Jesus said, fear not, it's Luke 12, 32. We're going to go there. And he says, do not be seized with alarm, but fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So first we know the Father tenderly loves us. Okay, we've learned a lot about that intimacy and that love that casts out fear. And now we're hearing, he's saying, it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So fear not, why? Because he loves you. Fear not, why? Because he's given you the kingdom. Now the kingdom of God, Jesus said, it's like, he said, where's the kingdom? It's in you. It's in your heart. And this kingdom is God's gift to us. And it enables us to think differently. It's his way of doing and being right, the Amplified Bible says. Seek first the kingdom. We sang about it this morning. Matthew 6.33 says, seek first the kingdom of God. Um, and it's God's way of being right and doing right. So his kingdom is the way he operates things, okay? So... I want you to just recognize that this kind of is a gift to our minds. The kingdom of God, because you think, well, he's given us the kingdom. Well, what does that even mean? Am I going to become a king? Is people gonna, are people going to bow down and worship? No, no, no. And by the way, Jesus' kingdom is not earthly. It's heavenly. It's bringing heaven into earth. His whole desire is for us to have what happens in heaven on earth. So he's given you authority to pray the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. I mean, whatever, yeah, whatever you, whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. So whatever you loose on earth is going to come from heaven into your life. So I know I'm kind of like all over the place right now, but I want you to hone in. I want you to focus in on that, that he's given you the kingdom. He's given you the way to think. He's given you a pastor who's teaching you how to think and to believe the love of God in every turn. And that kingdom elevates us to a heavenly place. We don't have to die and go to heaven to experience heaven. We can have heaven right here on earth because we listen, we think how God thinks. We have his thoughts, not just thoughts of the natural realm and the earthly realm. We're an earthen vessel, but we have a spirit from God. Jesus said, marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. So when we get born again, Nicodemus says, well, how can I get born again if I'm old? I can't go back into my mother's womb. Jesus says, unless you're born of water and spirit, your mother's giving birth to you as a water birth. Now you have to be born of the spirit. So when your spirit comes alive, that's on the inside of you. That's when your life begins and you begin to live heaven on earth, literally. Isn't that awesome? All right, so I'm going to put my glasses on because I want to read this to you. Let's go to our third time that Jesus said, Fear not. It's a story in the Bible. It's, we're not going to actually turn to that verse yet, but I want you to just listen. I'm going to give you some context. So there's a man, his name is Jairus. He has a daughter who's very sick and almost seems like, like she's on the edge. And he's been hearing about Jesus going about and healing. And, and if you're needing healing in your body right now, this is for you. Or if in your mind or in your heart or if you know someone who needs healing. So he needed healing for his daughter. And he went and found Jesus, asked him, Jesus, will you come to my house? And Jesus said, yes. Isn't that awesome? Jesus said, yes. I'm not too busy. I'll come to your house and pray for you. And so he, on his way to Jairus' house, but they get interrupted. The crowds are all pushing and everything, and they get interrupted by a woman who's been sick for like over 12 years. Everything stops, because Jesus is like, oh, I just felt power leave me. Jairus is probably thinking, what, what? Oh no, like we gotta go on, my daughter needs you. But he stopped, and he sees the woman, the woman was healed, and the whole crowd is like amazed. And while Jesus is saying to her, your faith, made you well. Right in, while he was speaking, it says the messenger came to Jairus and said, Master, it's too late. Don't bother the master anymore. Your daughter has died. I mean, it's crushing. It's crushing. I, I can just imagine the emotion and the feeling. Now, this is why I'm sharing this. I believe God wants you to hear this because maybe in your life right now, you've experienced something where it just feels too late. Your dream is dead. Maybe someone you knew that you loved has died. And gone on and it's just left you in hopeless now 
Jairus is feeling this, and Jesus turns to him and he says, fear not, only believe. And that's something I want us to just record in our heart. Fear not, only believe. When it's too late, when something ends, when it seems like it's over, I'm not going to fear. I'm going to believe. So Jesus said, don't be seized with alarm or struck with fear. Simply believe in me. I'm able to do this, and she shall be made well. So then the rest of the story goes. He goes on, and he prays for her. He walks in the house. We know the story. If Some of you might know the story, but the most important thing is he goes in there, and he takes the, he goes, she's only sleeping. And he takes her hand, and she rises up. And Jairus is all excited. And listen, I believe God raises the dead here in this world. There's some of us that we've heard of testimonies of people that they were lost. They saw their spirit lifting up of their body on the operation table, but then they came back down. They had a choice whether they wanted to go or stay. Um, don't pray for me because I'm going if I have that choice, by the way. No, I'm here for you. I'm here to serve. So I'm here whatever God wants. It's his will. But Maybe we know somebody who's died and we feel like our life is broken or a dream has died or a relationship has ended or a job or a career. Maybe you made a move and it was a mistake and you just feel like it's too late. This is for you. This is where fear is going to try. It tries to come. It tries so subtly to just, just erode your faith and just kind of, you know, make you feel on the inside smaller and smaller and smaller. And I'm telling you, Jesus is saying, fear not. He loves you tenderly, affectionately. And he said, I'm going to give you the kingdom and only believe. And you never know. And by the way, even if you have lost a loved one, they are only sleeping. Because when Jesus comes back for all of us in the rapture, they're all going to rise. They're going to rise first. Those who have gone before us will actually be the first ones to rise. So we have this hope. Listen, people, this world is so temporary. This life is so temporary. It feels like everything. But you know what? It's just so fleeting. It's brief and fleeting. These things are temporary and we cannot get caught up. We have the Father's attention. We have his love. We, he's given us his kingdom. He's given us authority on this earth to walk. He even said in John 16, 24, ask anything in my name and I will give it to you so that your joy may be full. He wants you to live a joyful life. And I, I feel sad too when I've lost loved ones, but even so, we can't ever, our happiness can't be based on somebody out here. Our happiness has to be based on our Father loves us and he's with us, inside us, and he will never leave us. All right, so speaking of that, I'll tell you another story. This is our fourth time where, fourth thing that Jesus, fourth time Jesus said, fear not. In John 6, 16, the disciples um, took a boat and they were heading across the sea and the Bible says it was getting rough and the, the water was rising high because of the winds that were blowing. And we've heard these stories too about Jesus, um, well, about these disciples in the boat. And it's getting dark and they're not able to make, they're, they're, they haven't been able to go very far because the wind is pushing them and they're kind of freaking out. And all of a sudden they see what is Jesus walking on the water but they're super afraid and terrified and they're, they're screaming out because they don't, they think it's a ghost. But I think about this and anyway, Jesus comes and this is what he says. He says, fear not, it is I. Be not afraid, it's me. And I think about this picture and I think about these guys. First of all, it's kind of funny because actually if you go to um, John, Mark, I think it's Mark, 648 there's another version of this and it's actually kind of funny it says having seen that they were troubled on the water and tormented for the wind was against them it was the fourth watch of the night so it's like four in the morning or five in the morning and um, it says Jesus came to them but it says that he kind of acted as if he meant to pass them by like this is kind of funny if you think about it he's walking and he's sort of acting like he's going to pass them they're shrieking out. It says they shrieked out in horror. And I'm thinking about these strong disciples, these strong fishermen, like we're fishermen, you know, and they're strong guys like in their 30s and they're all like shrieking out in terror. Like, I don't know, for me, it just kind of landed on me kind of funny. And then here's Jesus like walking by, like, going to pass them. But then he sees them and he wants them to be peace. And he says to them, be not afraid. It is I. And what I did was I looked up all this, this verse in several trans 
in several translations, and I want to read it to you. And I actually have this in my journal, and I sometimes just look at this, and I say it over and over, all these things together at once, just to remind myself. By the way, because like I told you, I'm not, a, I'm not here to say, oh, I've mastered fear, and you guys just need to follow me. No, I'm saying I have lived my life. Um, my Christian life, you know, everything I've done, I feel like I've done it afraid. I have a little journal here that is my, like, fear not journal, all my verses on how not to fear. And my favorite verse, I, it's a, the, I lost the cover a couple years ago, and this verse is my favorite. It says, fear not, there's nothing to fear. This is Isaiah 41.10, just random, kind of going like a little random here. Fear not, there's nothing to fear, for I'm with you. Do not look around you in terror and be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and harden you to difficult. This is like my best friend. <laughs> like I'm like getting choked up right now because I've said this so many times. Like there's like coffee spills on this and tear stains on this page. Um, I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. God cares. He loves you. You are his. You are his little flock. He's given you the kingdom. He's saying, fear not, only believe. And now, in your darkest moment, in a moment where you feel, now think about when things are dark. It was like in the fourth watch of the night, and you're on this water. And water's not my favorite thing. I, airplanes, I'm great with, but I'll probably never go on a cruise. I'm not good with water. But if you think about water, why? Because water's, I mean, I love water, but like out there, there's nothing to stand on. There's no ground. It's very, you know, rocky. They're being tossed back and forth. It's very unstable. And maybe in our lives, our emotions, I think about our emotions, it's like that. Very moving, one day one way, one day calm, one day, you know, it's like treacherous waters, you know. And it's dark, and it's like, God, where are you? Have you ever been in that situation where you've just been overcome with all these intangible things that you can't put your finger on, you can't control, and it's just taking over, and it's okay. First of all, it's okay to feel the fear. It's all right, because you can't, it's okay. Your feelings are non-negotiable. They're, they're there. You can't deny it, but you just can't let them control you. You can't let emotions control. So we're not talking about denying or ignoring emotions, but we're saying, they can't control you. Jesus wanted these boys to learn how to control, that they have authority to speak even to the elements of this world. But they were just given to the emotion of it. And wherever you are right now, maybe you're in that moment where it's just like, I don't know, everything's just falling apart. Well, this is what Jesus said on the water. He said, take courage, it is I. Be not afraid. Stop being afraid. Stop being alarmed. Take hope. It is I. These are different versions that I gathered together. Don't be afraid. Take courage. I am here. Calm down. It's me. Don't be afraid. Don't yield to fear. Have courage. It's really me. Isn't that wonderful? We can fear not because it really is him. He really is alive. Jesus is for real. And his love for you is real. His kingdom is real. We can't see it, but it's more real than this stage I'm standing on, than this podium. It's more real than, than the chair you're sitting in, the couch you're sitting, because all of that is temporary. The kingdom of God is what lasts forever. So he's like, guys, boys, calm down. It's me. I'm here. And I hope that that just... It brings comfort to me. I have to hear this all the time. That's why I write these things down. I look at them over and over. And every day is different, and every week is different. Every year is different. You're facing new things all the time. If we got to just get in the habit of speaking that word, what Jesus said, just saying, Lord, you love me tenderly. Lord, you've given me the kingdom. I'll fear not. Lord, I'll fear not. I'll only believe. Lord, I'll fear not, for you are with me on these waters where it feels like everything's moving around and changing. And I like how Greg says, things might feel like they're falling apart, but they're really falling into place when you have God working inside of you. Finally, my last verse that I want to share with you comes from the book of Revelation. And it's actually involving John, um, the disciple whom Jesus loved. He called himself the disciple whom Jesus loved, right? And 
I'd actually like to take it from a verse up earlier in chapter one. So Revelations, I'm sorry. Yeah, Re Revelation chapter one, and look in verse 10. Paul, John, we know, John the Beloved, he, he you know, wrote the book, he was on the island of Patmos. Pastor talked about this recently, that he would, they tried to boil him in oil, they tried to silence him, he, he just, he wouldn't die. So they finally got rid of him and exiled him to the island of Patmos. And there he was left, and that's where he had this vision. It says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice, like the calling of a war trumpet, saying, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Write what you see in the book, and then so forth and so forth, keeps some direction. So verse 12, it says, I turned to see who the voice was that was speaking to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. In the midst of the lamps, lampstands, one like the Son of Man. Now, this is the point right here. I want you to see this is Jesus. Okay, now this is Jesus, not the Jesus John knew in the, when he was on the boat and he was scared, and not even the Jesus that they saw that when he walked through the walls after he'd risen from the dead. He said, I'm on my way up, but you boys, this is your time. They said, oh, now are you coming for the kingdom? You rose from the dead, so now we're going to build your kingdom, right? Like David, like you're going to be like King David again, and we're going to have this kingdom out here on this earth, and everyone's going to see how we are really your people, and Jesus said, no, that, that's not the point right now. But you shall receive the power of the Holy Spirit. When, it, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. And you'll be my witnesses throughout the earth. It was like not what they were realizing, that this kingdom would be invisible. So now, though, this is John's like 90 years old. He turns and he sees in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a robe which reached to his feet and with a girdle of gold about his breast. His head and his hair were like white as snow, white like white wool, white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet glowed like burnished bright bronze as it's refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. I just want you to see this picture of Jesus, because this is why we can be free from fear forever. Look who lives inside of you. He is standing tall. He is strong. He's in his white robe. He's got his gold, golden sash. He's got his hair is like white as wool. His feet are glowing. His sound of his voice is like many waters. You know, you might be drowning in an ocean or drowning in the waters of life, but God's voice is, has many waters. Like his voice is stronger. His voice is bigger. His life, his kingdom is bigger. And so John falls to his feet, or falls down to the floor. It says in verse 17, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as if dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Then he said, I am the ever living one. I died, but see, I am alive forevermore, and I possess the keys of death and hell. So this, I think, is kind of cool because it's like the, Jesus is saying it, but it's in the book of Revelations. It's like the future, but he's saying, John, here I am. Here's how I really look. You never saw me the way I really am. Man, I mean, that just gets me choked up thinking about how powerful the Jesus that lives inside of us and we don't give him credit. We don't even listen to his voice sometimes. We're looking for someone out here. We're trying to have intimacy with someone here. We're trying to have intimacy with this, these people. We're trying to find someone to love us, someone to approve us, someone to think that we're good, someone to like us, someone to follow us. And all the while, we have this beautiful king, this king, this prince, who became like a man. He lowered himself to be just like us. And we don't, and they didn't even recognize him. And he said that I'm the light of the world, but the dark, the, the darkness loved the darkness. It didn't love the light. People love the darkness more than the light. But you and me are not like that. We are hungry for the light, right? You want the light of God's word. You want his love, his kingdom, his peace. All that comes with him. But look at him. This is, he's a person. 
This is not a religion. This is not rules that we're following. Oh, I have to have the right verse for this, or I have to have the right, I gotta make sure I really am led by the Spirit today and that I do this right and do this, and now I'm gonna miss God. How can you miss him? He's a bright and shining star. He's the morning star. He's the alpha and omega. He's the beginning of everything in the end. How high, you go so high, he's there. You go in the valley, he's in the valley with you. He will, he's too big. He's bigger than the ocean. He's, he's, I mean, he's bigger than what we can imagine. But guess what? He's closer than we realize. He's not next to you. He's not above you. He's in you and he's with you. And that's what happens when you get born again. Jesus comes to live inside of you. This Jesus. And Paul, I mean, um, John couldn't even take it. And he is the disciple whom Jesus loved. But even he fell to his feet. He was so afraid. He, it was so overwhelming. And he couldn't even stand up. And, but how beautiful is it that our Savior Jesus puts his hand on his shoulder and he says, Fear not. I am the beginning and the end. I am the first and the last. Yes, I died, but I've risen. And I have the keys. I have the authority now. And I love you. And I want you. And when you call my name, I'm there for you. This is the Savior that we're serving. This is the, this is, this is the Jesus that I fell in love with you know, so many years ago and still in love with him today. He's my, my everything. And he can be your everything. It doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are. If you are needing healing in your body or there's just anxiety in your heart, Jesus wants to touch you right now. He wants to fill you right now with his spirit, with his power, just like that woman who was sick for over 12 years. Maybe you've been struggling with something for almost 12 years and you're like when is this going to end when lord i desire it so much i'm saying today why not today be free from this fear that's tried to stop you that's tried to make you think no it's too late make you think no it's too difficult it's too dark it's too god's not there but no he's saying calm down it's me i'm here it really is me that's everything and he wants you to feel his presence right now. I just pray right now for God's presence to fill whoever's watching right now. You might need healing in your body. You might need hope in your heart. You might feel lonely, like beyond belief. But I'm telling you right now, you are not alone. The Lord is with you. His presence is with you. His goodness is is, it's, it's planned. It's in the plan for his goodness. It says in, in Jeremiah that uh, God has given you a future and a hope, not for evil, but for good. So the plan that God has for you is for good. It's for good and it's for good. Like it brings good and it's for good. It's forever. You can be free from fear forever. You do not have to be tormented anymore. Some of you in your mind, you've been tormented. Maybe you're a young child or a teenager and you've been tormented with dreams, you've been tormented and you feel so guilty about awful dreams that you might be having or awful nightmares that you've been having or maybe an experience that happened to you in that maybe there's a moment in your life that you don't even remember where fear came in and gripped your heart and began to just do its work inside of you and you feel afraid and you don't even know why. And you've been trying to, you're like those disciples out in the dark and you're trying to make your way and you can't even make your way. And you don't even know why. And that's all right. It's okay. I want you to know right now it's all right because he loves you tenderly. And he's given you the kingdom. You're worth more to him. Your soul is more valuable than this whole world. He's given you his pearl of great price, his kingdom, inside your heart and mind. And he's given you himself. He said, fear not, only believe. So in this moment, I pray right now, I pray for those that are watching and you need, you know, you, you have faith, but you're like that woman. You feel like it's just been taking too long. Or you're like Jairus, it feels like it's too late. Or you're like the disciples where you're just screaming out and you have no idea what to do. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, touch each person right now with your Holy Spirit. 
Touch them with your anointing right now. You are the live presence of God, the Spirit of God. Right now, I release the Spirit of God. I release that wave of power, like an ocean. It's coming to you, and it's, it's calling you, and it's touching you, and it's flooding your heart right now, flooding away all the dark, all of the emptiness. It's filling up. All of the darkness is being healed. His light is coming into your mind where you felt confused, angry, upset, fretful. His light is filling you right now, right now. Just receive that. Just receive that from the Father. He loves you and he wants you to be full of joy, full of himself, full of that Savior, Jesus, who's standing tall and strong. And he's in you right now. So just receive him. You, you already have him in you, but you're now needing to just open your mind up and let him touch you right where you're at, right there. He's healing you right now. He's healing you. He's strengthening you. He's from the inside out girding you up. He knows what you're going through. Even You don't even know all of it. You don't even know the full details. He does, and he's coming in right now. And for those of you right now, so just stay there in that moment. Just stay there. Those of you watching and you're feeling the presence of God right now, I encourage you, just stay in God's presence. Just let him do his work. Let him touch you deeply. And those of you, you're saying, I want this. I, I want this living water. I want this bread from heaven. I, I want to know Jesus more. I don't know him at all. I've never been born again. I didn't know. I thought I was just doing the right thing by, I think I was born a Christian. I thought I was just born a Christian. I went to church my whole life. I didn't know I needed to be born again. You need to be born again, Jesus said. And all that means is that you make a decision to let the Spirit of God come in and birth your spirit on the inside. It's not just your mind and the intellectual things you know and the verses you know of the Bible or just that you know what to do. It's His Spirit in you. Just pray this. Heavenly Father, I believe, just say that out loud, I believe Jesus died for me. He took my sin on the cross. He took it all for me. There's nothing I can do to earn it or deserve it. I just freely receive it right now in Jesus' name. I acknowledge the blood of Jesus and what he did for me on the cross. Say that out loud. What he did for me on the cross is all I need. I receive my new heart, a brand new heart, a brand new spirit. I am born again by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. It's simple. A child can understand it. Sometimes we adults, we get so com complicated and make it so confusing. But he's in you now. And I just feel his spirit. Let his spirit stir you up. Receive. Receive. And guess what? This is a new day. And guess what? The light of God is going to shine brighter and brighter until you see him face to face. So don't worry about what the waves are saying or the wind is saying or what people are saying. You just stay in the love. You just stay thinking about the kingdom of God. He's going to show you all kinds of amazing things. It's going to be fun. I want to invite you to come to church. Stay tuned. Um, we'll be here, back here on Wednesday for Think Like a Champion. You can watch this broadcast over and over and over. Um, catch any of our broadcasts on YouTube, our Life Changers app. Uh, we love you so much. We are going to stay connected. Even though we're globally connected, we are going to stay connected by his presence. So guess what? Freedom from fear forever. You got this. I love you so much. I'll see you next time. God bless you.